That's an acting trick with your eyes. So, okay, so one of the things I learned from Kelsey Grammer, always, always, there's a way you can look at a camera where it's you're talk you're talking to the people, but you're also I'm not. Look, really I'm looking, looking at the camera as you're yeah. doing this. So like camera left, you're looking kinda at it, but you're not looking at it. But they feel it feel like you're about to break that fourth wall a little. Oh shit, that's good, bro. Yeah, 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 yeah. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Good, keep going. And you feel like so then then you start doing things that like, is it mischievous? Yeah. Are you angry? Yes. Do you feel sexy? Yeah, oh, that's my guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Good son. Yeah, that's good. That's good. <laughs> All right, guys, welcome back. EYL, we back home mm. for a short period of time. Yeah, for a short so this, time. Yeah, this is gonna be a dope episode, man. Shout out to my guy Punch first and foremost. Yeah, my brother. Ran into him at the airport in LA. What were we out there for? Uh, it might have been Grammys. Grammy, definitely Grammys. Grammy, mm -hmm. I bet. Yeah, for sure. I see. I see what you did there. Well, I'm get to that. <laughs> I see so, what you did. This boy think he's slick. <laughs> so yeah. So we was out there, um, connected, and then a couple weeks later, he was like, "Yo, um, I'm managing Rotimi now, and uh, I want to get him on a platform." So it was like, "Yeah, let's do it. Let's let's set it up." I was big fan of Power. So thank you, yeah. brother. Let's we all are. We all are. Let's just say that. Let's, oh, yeah. Let's yeah, this is not just right like now. a youth. We all are. <laughs> I wasn't a big fan of your character. Yeah, yeah. I wasn't either. I wasn't either. <laughs> I appreciate your character. <laughs> he well, was necessary. It was necessary. He was very he necessary. Was necessary. He was very necessary. <laughs> yeah, because it reminded us like what Ghost used to be. Yeah, yeah. He, yeah. You know, he, the toward the second, third season, we saw that he was a lover, mm -hmm. but he had a little still sweet in him. Mm -hmm. And you were like, nah, this is, I'm what you used to be, bro. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, Ro tip me, interesting story. I know a lot of people know you from Power. Yeah. Um, but you're an artist, mm -hmm. singer, mm -hmm. entrepreneur, mm -hmm. um, relationship goals for the whole continent yeah. of Africa, right? <laughs> yes, sir. We'll, talk, we'll talk about that. Yeah. Father, mm -hmm. um, Nigerian. Yes, sir. That's why I wore my Niger flag. I see you, brother. Yes. I see you. <laughs> Shout yes, out sir. to all my Nigerians. Yes, sir. Niger family. Um, so, yeah. So, we, I feel like we got a lot to talk about. Let's but first it. and foremost, thank you for joining us. Appreciate thank it. Thank you for having me, my brother. Yo, did he leave athlete out? Yeah, he did. All right, I will, yeah, athlete. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> thank you, brother. Thank you. <laughs> so, all right. So, how does it start? Because I know... Um, you used to do music. Mm -hmm. You're doing music now. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's come 360. Mm -hmm. But you you were music. And I believe you was in a group with Jay-Z's nephew. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so how, how did this all start from the music side? So a lot of people don't know that musically, I've been singing since I was four years old. Mm. And my mom had me, my mom had me um, as a Nigerian wedding singer. So I was singing at weddings from Connecticut to Philly to Delaware, Jersey, all of that for like five, six years. At what age? From four, four? to nine. Now, what, singing at weddings at four years old? Yeah, Wait, so a yeah. Nigerian wedding? What, what, like, what's the like, difference? So like Nigerian, like four Nigerian oh, four weddings. Nigerians. Yeah, okay, got four Nigerians. Okay, four Nigerian weddings. So I'll be like the, the, when the, when the, when the bride is walking down or I'll be singing gospel songs or like just start the party. So I was doing that from four to nine. And then um, in high school, so that's when I started realizing like, yo, I really want to do music. I, like I love art. I love this. And so... Um, in high school with Jay-Z's nephew. So my junior year, his nephews moved into town. And so they created a group called MBH and they needed a singer. What was it called? MBH. 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 What's that stand for? Natural Born Hustlers. Natural Born Hustlers. So we started that, but we was winning talent shows and doing all type of things. And then Hove called one time and was like, listen, if y'all really want to do this, come to New York. I need y'all here at uh, here in my, um, in my penthouse every other week play your songs, perform your songs for me. So we're going every Saturday to Hove's crib and performing in his living room. Like, this is what we wrote for the week. And he's like, okay, that's trash. <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> Keep doing that. I love your voice. So again, like, so you're 16, 17 years old and you're seeing somebody who's arguably the greatest rapper say, yo, you have real talent. Yeah. And that was just the motivating thing for my life, actually. I really started like, okay, I could really do this. How consistent were you? Uh, were you? Is it like <clears throat> every week y'all were do making new songs? Yeah, and yeah. Putting, oh, yeah, wow. Yeah, so we were doing talent shows. We were doing uh, uh, community college shows, YMCA shows. We were doing all that. And then during the week after school, I, I played ball. So after after practice, I'd go and we'd just write songs, record them, and then bring into Hole's crib, man. And That's literally crazy. just... You know, see what worked and see what didn't work, and you know, you just sharpening your performance and and all of that. So, so 
you're singing in high school, <clears throat> but you go to college for yeah. communications, right? Yeah. And that was in Illinois? Yeah. So North, Northwestern, right? I went to Northwestern. Northwestern. Yeah. So at that point, did you like just give up on a dream of being an artist or did you say, okay, mm. let me put this on pause for a minute or yeah. did you continue to be an artist while in college? So I went to school originally for voice performance. So I got in for voice performance mm. in Northwestern. I got in and I was realizing like, damn, I'm doing all these classes and getting half credits. And I'm learning music theory and all these things that I personally wouldn't use for my artist, like my uh, dream to be an artist. So let me actually put my you know, college experience to use. Let me go to communication. Then I did a, a minor in business. So let me start running how to run a label, how to figure out what I want to do. How do I handle my money? How do I understand investments? So I started doing that early. But now nah, it was always music. It was always music. So we would actually sneak into the music department studio at night. So I got cool with the, um, the, the janitor. So we record all our records at night. So just to, and sell the mixtapes uh, during lunchtime, during school. In, so. in, at the college. In college. So you, was, you had a buzz in college as a musician. I had a buzz in college as a musician. We, we skipped over something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we shouldn't breeze over it. Northwestern is not the easiest school to get into. Oh, no, no, no. This is like top level, one of the best communication schools in the country, yes, if not yes, definitely yes. in the world. Yes. So I'm sure, like, scholastically, you must have been super intelligent to yes. even get in there. Yeah. But from the parents' side, mm. yeah. <laughs> I'm sure they're not thinking, like, yeah, we're sending him there to fi find no. out what he can be in music. No, no. What are their thoughts about what they want you to do? Wrote to me, you have to be a doctor, <laughs> a lawyer, an engineer. A dentist. <laughs> Forget the music now. Anybody can. I don't even want to hear your music. Wrote to me. I don't want to hear your songs. <laughs> you know what I mean. So for me, it was like I'm competitive. So my dad put that bug in my back. Like, listen, get your degree. Focus on this. If you want to make music, cool. But get this. This this will change your life and save you. And just learn, learn as much as you can. So my deal with, with him was, if you graduate, he'll pay for the first year out of college and pay my rent and everything so I can focus on music. So that was the deal, mm. you know what I mean? So again, shout out to just having amazing parents that believe in, and do that for you. But yeah, I had, to, I, had to, I had to really, really work and compartmentalize my time, man, because again, making the record, selling the record in school, doing work and then going to uh, Chicago in the city and like doing all types of open mics and just build the name in the city. So it was always compartmentalizing and, and learning how to just balance my time and try to make money while I was doing it. What did your parents do, like, for a living? Oh, so my mom was in public health, and my dad was an investment banker. Investment banker? Yeah, In yeah, New yeah. York? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, he didn't want you to go into finances? No, nah, he didn't push for it. He just made sure that I understood, like, how to handle my money. Is he still an investment banker? No, 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 he's, he's retired He's retired Yeah, now. yeah, he made sure. So, you, so, the financial literacy in business, mm -hmm. that was something that you was introduced to at a young age. Very young age. So, my dad basically would have me come to work with him and just see and just learn how to understand taxes, understand savings, understand stocks. So, like, the first money I did. So, basically, a lot of people don't know. So, with my father, he made it to the point where if you're really that guy, wrote to me, if you're really who you believe you are, make sure, save all your money. Do not spend your power money. Mm -hmm. So for six years, I never touched my power money. I made, I used, I lived off of my shows, my hostings and my endorsement deals. Yeah. So for six years, I just saved all of that. And the first purchase I did was buy real estate. So knowing that, that was something that my dad taught me while I was in high school. Like save, make sure you have a, a line of uh, a, a line of work and then find different streams to make money. So that's what I started doing. That's crazy. Yeah. So we're back. I want to go back to, to Northwestern because yeah. you're selling the tapes and yeah. making some money. But what is your sound? Like you're still trying to figure out your sound, I'm assuming. Mm. So like who's influencing you? And at that time, what is it? Is it R&B? Is it a mix? Like <clears throat> who's influencing the sound that you're making at this time? So at that time, man, I was one of those artists that didn't really know. I just knew I could sing really well. Mm -hmm. So I didn't really have a style. It was more so trying to emulate everybody. And so, okay, Chris Brown had a record. This person had a record. This person. So I'm doing records and they're not really connecting because it wasn't me. Mm. So the, every artist goes to that point. Every, every artist needs to realize that focus on finding your sound and who you are. And then now that's when everything took off for me. So when I realized, okay, I'm African-American, okay, I'm the epitome of really African 
American. Let me lean into R&B. Let me lean into Afrobeat. Let me lean into, you know, pop, whatever it was that made my sound. So my mom had me listening to country music early, R&B, jazz, all of that. Paul Simon, Fela Kunti, like all of that. So it was a melting pot. So when I realized, you know what, let me just be myself, man, that's when everything happened. But during that time, I was just, I was a dude that could sing and perform. So, all right, you graduate college. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. Major in communication. Yeah. Your dad made you the promise that if you graduate college, he's going to take care of your first year of living as an adult. Yes. Now, when do you actually get into acting? Oh, okay. All right. So graduate school, struggling artists. All my friends are getting jobs with these big companies. So I'm like, dang, man, what's going on? Did I do the right thing? I mean, you start losing hope, right? So my manager at the time, he was like, Rogue, you're always really, really good in front of a camera. You're really good at uh, performing. Like you're really good with music videos. Try acting. Maybe go get a commercial or something. So... In Chicago, I'm like, all right, cool, whatever. Let me just try it. So no agency wanted to take me in because I had no resume. Mm-hmm. Only agency that took me in was because her son went to my school. So she was taking care of alumni. So she was like, just try it. You know, I'll come on, just try it. I go in, audition for her. She's like, oh, she's, you're, you're, you're kind of good. Okay. She's like, you know what? I have an audition in two days. It's called for a TV show called Boss. Mm. You're not going to get it. Because the role is already cast. You're not going to get it. Just want you to get used to um, uh, being in front of a casting director, being in front of um, and, and, and auditioning. So I'm like, all right, cool, whatever. At the time, I didn't know I had a photographic memory. So I can read and understand and digest things really fast. I didn't know that. I thought just everybody could do that. So go in. I'm not thinking anything. And this is how crazy I was with the music. So I don't know. Do you remember when you could write uh, your website on, your, on the wristbands? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm going into the audition like, all right, yeah, rotimimusic.com. All right, cool. <laughs> like, like not even thinking about being an actor. So I get on <clears throat> and Kelsey Grammer happens to be in the audition. And so I'm like, okay, cool. I'm not really thinking. I'm, it's, it's whatever. I'm not going to get it. I do it. And I didn't realize that she's saying, try it this way. Do it this way. Do it this way. I didn't realize I'd done it like 10 different ways. They call my They call me. And like, you got it. And I'm like, how? Like, <laughs> got what? It's like, okay, um, you're, you're, you, you, they're going to send an offer. You're, you're going to be on the show. So I booked my first audition, not really knowing what I'm signing up for. Yeah. So the best thing that happened to me, man, was Kelsey Grammer took me in, you know, and, and he said, yo, come an hour early, study with me. Let me explain how this works and da 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 So my first real acting class was episode one of Boss. That's crazy. Yeah. There's a there's a lot there, and yeah. for those who I know, there's some younger audience. They're like yeah. Kelsey Grammer. This is like one of the highest paid actors on TV. Mm-hmm. Started at Cheers, mm-hmm. then had Frasier, hugely successful, mm-hmm. syndicated. Mm-hmm. But even bigger, and a lot of people think you got to go to school because mm-hmm. of the degree you can get. But yeah. it speaks to going to school to be part of a network. Yeah, that alumni yes. got you this this audition, yes. but. Being with Kelsey mm-hmm. introduced you to a network named Stars, yes, which nobody nope. was really watching. Absolutely, at the time, absolutely. And you know, for me, again, what you just said, bro, I, I feel like college sometimes, or most of the times, is not really about the 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 classes you take, but more about like the hands you shake. You know what I mean? And for me, I understood that. And again, that was a that was a lifeline for me because I don't know if she didn't realize and and say, hey, what school would you go to? If she didn't do that, I don't know if I would have been an actor. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So she was a lifeline to my, you know, my career in a way. Um, but yeah, Kelsey Grammer took me in, man, and 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 really, really taught me about even even so, like what I should do and how I should even spend my first check because the first six figures out of college at 21, you don't really know what to do. So just the advice from him on just how to just you know. Uh, start an LLC. Don't put this under your name, you know, so they don't take your tax, half your taxes. That's crazy. You know, so like, I'm like, oh, okay, cool. So, you know, start your company, front row seat production, start it now. So that this is, so just explaining that. So everything was so fast paced and happening so fast at that time. A, a friend of the show was also on the cast. Oh, yeah. T.I. Oh, yeah. Shout <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. out the tip. So yeah. let's talk about this then. Yeah. All right. The first time you got a check, mm-hmm. You got a six-figure check just mm-hmm. out of college. So mm-hmm. you have 
um, your dad, who's a she, he's well versed in finances. Yes. So I'm sure he's giving you advice on it too. Yes. But then Kelsey Graham is giving you advice. So yeah, let's kind of break that down. Like so, you said you you started the LLC. Yeah, started the LLC. So the the the, the check was made out to your LLC as yes. opposed to you personally. Yes. So you can take deductions. Yes. And different things of that nature. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because if I kept it under my name, as soon as I get the check, it's already taxes. Personal already, income. Personal income. So. Having that a part of it, it was like, damn, like, and, I, and one of my guys who was on the show, he didn't know that. So he's getting like 20000 an episode, but he's getting eleven, you know? So he's like, he thought they were robbing him. I'm like, no, bro, no, it's not. <laughs> no, it doesn't work like that. It's more so just, you know, put it under your company's name. Um, you collect everything and then you can figure out how to write things off and, and figure out the taxes on that. So I, he explained that to me perfectly. And that was the first thing I did and saved me a lot of money. And I was able to put a lot of things under my business. So, when you, when do you start working with at Power? Power was two thousand and fourteen. So this was two thousand and twelve. What I'm talking about. So mm. few years. How does the Power story? How's yeah. that? How's that? For Power. Oh, yeah. let's go. But in between that time, right? Yeah. Because the show doesn't last as long, mm -hmm. which now means that you you're in between gigs, <laughs> right? So that money that you had to now your dad Ooh. telling you save, save, save. Yes. <clears throat> what's, the, what's the in between time like? Because there's plenty of actors who don't get gigs. They don't get a power oh. after they start on a show. So, a lot of people don't understand, man. Being an actor, you know, it's you have to have financial literacy because if you don't, you don't know when your next job is going to come. You don't know what audition is going to hit. You don't know anything. So, you have to be a masterful saver. You know what I mean? So, for me, well, after that show, Again, I've never auditioned. I didn't know anything about anything else but Boss because I was on that for two seasons. So my dad and I talked and he said, listen, like the money that you've made, we're going to put that away and only work off of $25,000 for the next eight months. Let's figure that out. If you're really him, you'll make $25,000 work. Everything else, you're going to thank me later. We don't need to use this. That was for boss. This is for boss money. So how much how much money was that that you put away? So I put away about two seasons, about two twenty five. So you put a quarter million away, quarter and million twenty five thousand for eight months. So a quarter million away, and then half of that I put into just like really safe stocks. So like um, Starbucks, um, Google, uh, Face, Facebook, YouTube, like all those things. So I did all of that to just keep it afloat, you know? And then um, my dad was like, nah, work off of 25,000. So I had to kind of find a, sp a spot. So I was like, all right, cool. Let me, let me move to Atlanta because it's cheap over there. Let me get some roommates. That's my friends. But I, I made sure that my roommates were also songwriters. So we built it. We built a studio in Atlanta. Didn't really have any furniture because I was like, listen, bro, we're going to have computer chairs. If we're going to get some joints, they're gonna, if the girls going to like us, they're going to like us for our personality, brother. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it was, it was that type of energy. And I was just figuring out how I can make this stretch and what can I do. Then my agent called me and he was like, listen, man, um, there's a TV show called Power. And all this time, that, that eight months, it was just staying in the house recording and, and doing features and trying to just make some type of money, you know, and doing some hosting. So I was able to flip it a little bit. Um, and then, um, so then my, my agent called me, he's like, yo, there's a TV show called Power. But mind you, this is now seven months into my savings. So I'm like a down to about 3,500, 3,000 at this point. So, <sighs> terrible times. Flashbacks. Yeah, <laughs> Damn. <laughs> nah, so my, um, my agent calls me. He's like, listen, Ro, um, you got to put yourself on tape. But if you get it, you have to fly yourself out to, the, uh, to L.A. because they're going to want to see you in the room and do it. So I was like, all right, cool. I don't know what power is. It's 50, it's 50 cent show. I was like, ah, OK. All right. I mean, what else we got? So let's do it. So I ended up doing up, putting myself on tape. They loved it. They're like, OK, you get out here in two days. So I'm like, damn, that's a tick. That's a ticket. Oh, shoot. OK. Two days, all right, cool. Flight, about a good 700, 500. Okay, damn, all right, I'm down to 2,500. Okay, cool. Ro, you're going to have to stay in a motel, man. You're going to have to stay in a motel. So I found a motel in East Hollywood with roaches, all type of things, bro. It was, I go to the front desk. I'm like, hey, bro, um, I don't know how long I'll be here, but is there a way we could work out? I'm a struggling artist. I don't really have that much. Can you, it was 60, a 60 a night. He was like, I'll give it to you for 35, I believe. 
I said, okay, thank you, bro. Thank you, man. Thank you. So I was able to half that. Okay, so cool. I can stretch it half the time long. Okay, cool. All right. They don't even call me in until a week later. So now I'm counting. All right. Damn. It's 35. Bank account got a ticker on it. (laughs) 35. Okay. I can eat if I do this. Hmm. What girl I know I can get some food. (laughs) Shoot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Shorty was cool. So let me just, oh yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Let me me stay at her crib. Like literally, bro, like I'm trying to figure this out because I I have too much. I don't want to call my dad and ask. I'm like, no, I I can do this, you know? And again, it's my money, but I love the challenge of it. You know, I love the challenge of it. And I really didn't want to touch that. I really wanted to save that and see what I could do later with that money. So go in literally a week later, get it. They call me. um, Hey, Ro, uh, we love you, but we're going to see you. Can you wait another week and a half? Because we want you to do it again in front of the network now. So I'm there now three and a half weeks. So now the money's just going like this, going like this, going like this, going like this. So now I'm, I'm trying to Uber, I'm trying to this. So I'm down to about, in three weeks, about 1,200 in terms of food, in terms of gas, in terms of everything, about 1,200. So, okay, well, tell me what are you going to do, man? What are you going to do? So then go in, and it was me and Lakeith, uh, Lakeith Stanfield, right? Yeah, Stanfield, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah Lakeith. So it's me and him now. So he's over here, I'm over here. I'm yeah, like, you're balling for the part of Dre. Balanced, yeah, nobody knows that. Nobody wow. knows, yeah, I don't really talk about that. That's crazy. Wow. But yeah, we both were balling for Dre, and we're both in the same position. Like, he's like, bro, you know, if I don't get this, I kind of, you know, I can still, I got a, another show I'm working on, which was Atlanta. ATL. At the time. Yeah, yep, yep. So I'm like, dog, I don't care who you are. I don't give a fuck what's going on. <laughs> it's not yours, bro. It's not yours. And that was the energy I, I, I had the whole time. It was like, I need this. I, don't, I need this. So I go in, embody it like my life depended on. I, I brought props. I bought this. I did this. I, I did everything because I knew that I only had about $1,000 left. And go in and kill it and then move to New York. Ooh. Yeah. And then the, the, so the original, you get the role. Yeah. You were supposed to only be like a short yeah, period yeah, of time, right? Yeah, yeah. And then that ended up being seasons. Yeah. So how does that work? Because like when somebody's writing a script, right? Okay. They write you in a script and they say, okay, you're going to be in for three episodes and you get killed. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You impress them enough so they have to, because now they got to rewrite the whole script. Yeah. Because I'm assuming now that is like a domino effect, right? Mm-hmm. Where now they have to write you in for another four seasons. So mm-hmm. now it's like... Now all of the other characters have to be adjusted. adjusted. Another character might have to be taken out. Yeah, it's a lot of work involved. So yeah, so my character was only really supposed to be on season two and then die early season three, and it was supposed to just be like, oh, Kanan's little man that he's out of prison. He got his little man, and that was really it. Mm-hmm. And he, he does some crazy stuff and he gets killed. But again, I was on savage mode, bro. I was like, listen, I need, I need this, I need this, I need this, and so. Even though the first season, I really didn't have that many lines, I made sure everything I did with my eyes was like, what was that? Did he, oh, is he up to something? It was, so I caused so much curiosity with the character that they started realizing like, oh, wow, like there's something here. Mm-hmm. But if I would have played it to the words, it would have been like, all right. Oh, let's talk about that. So what is yeah. this? this is, that's an acting trick with your eyes? So, okay. So one of the things I learned from Kelsey Grammer always, always, there's a way you can look at a camera where it's, you're, talk, you're talking to the people, but you're also I'm not look, really I'm looking, looking at the camera as you're yeah. doing this. So like camera left, you're looking kind of at it, but you're not looking at it, but they feel, it feel like you're about to break that fourth wall a little, oh shit, that's good, bro. Yeah, 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 yeah. Keep going, freaking, keep going, keep going. Good, keep going. And you feel like, so then, then you start doing things that like, is it mischievous? Yeah. Are you angry? Yeah. Do you feel sexy? Yeah, ah, that's my guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good son. Yeah, that's good. That's good. So, so it's a it's a trick where you're able to one connect with the audience more, but then I made it to where you don't know what he's actually thinking. So I'm, I'll say something and then do something with my eyes and make him be like, "Should I believe that?" So that's where the 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 creation of Dre really, really started happening. And then they brought me in. They were like, man, you know, 50 and, and Courtney Kemp, like, yeah, we were going to, we were going to get rid of your character, <laughs> but 
we this might be baby ghost. Yeah. This this might be something here, you know. And then it felt like that. Yeah. So this is this is interesting because you started as season two. Yeah. And so from a contractual standpoint, mm -hmm. talk about that, like how it goes from being just a seasonal character yeah. to now being a regular on the show, right? Yeah. You got the negotiations around that. Yeah. So funny thing is, man, again, you have to believe in yourself. So the first my eight when I booked the show. My agents weren't happy with it because I was making less money than I made on Boss. So my first season, so you're supposed to obviously continue to grow in your in your income, but I took a back seat because I believed in the show. So I said, okay, let me just sign this one one year deal if I kill it. So it's like it's like being on a ten day contract, kind of. You, right. know, you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. not that extreme, but like. If you kill it, you're gonna get a, 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 a long term deal with the team. So mine was a one year situation where it was less than what I made, and it was less than, uh, per episode. So I was making like maybe like twenty five thousand an episode, you know. And so at power or the at other power at okay. power. So I took I took a hit to believe in it, but then I killed it. So when you kill it, that money can quadruple, four times, five x, you know. Once you once you show your worth, so mm -hmm. then. After season two, I redid my deal and I signed, um, you know, for six figures every episode, Ooh. you know, so then, but every year it'll grow, you know, so at that point in time, by season six, you're making a hefty, you know, amount of money. So yeah. it just grows, but then that's how we back ended. So I started with um, where it starts at, you know, a six figure and then it just consistently grows as the character grows. And by by season six, it's, it's, it's pretty nice. So, so what was that that first encounter with Fifth. Yeah. Right? Because this is his show. This is his baby, <laughs> Courtney Kent. We, we've had a conversation yeah. with her. Incredible. Yeah. What is that first conversation with, like from an actor standpoint? Yeah. But then also from a music yeah. standpoint too. So I had a crazy encounter at first because before I could even say anything, right? And this is God showing me, yo, bro, chill. So so I meet, uh, so Fifth is walking in and somebody's asking him like, yo, man, can you check out my mixtape? <laughs> and he was like, nah, man. It's probably a... So I was like, oh, no, I'm not. Oh, no. In the office? Dude, <laughs> no bands for him. No, this on the street? It was on the street, walking in before we did the scene. That's Oh, like just in the... In the street. He was walking. We were, we were about just to, filming. We were about to start filming. Where were you filming at? Time. In the Bronx? Y'all filmed in the Bronx? Uh, we were everywhere, yeah. Okay. Bronx, it was Queens, Brooklyn, everywhere. But, um... But yeah, we would. Yo, it was like literally him walking in, bro, and told dude was like, "Yo, can you? Can you?" He's like, "No," Frisbee. and sat down and said, "What's up, bro?" <laughs> no. So oh, shit. All right. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, but now nah, it was. It was. It was. All right, bro. If you're gonna do it, he got to find out that you did music, not by you asking for anything. Just do your job. Let him know that you're cool. Let him know that you're hungry about it. And for me, I over prepare. So like, I, I don't want to mess up a line. I don't want to mess up anything. And I think by the time for me as an actor, like, and for any actors watching, like, the preparation you do in anything, but the preparation I had for it, it was so crazy that it was fun when I got on set. It wasn't nervous. It wasn't, I was able to just play around. So my preparation is what got me my extension, really, because I was, I wasn't on set trying to just, okay, cool, 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 cool. No, I was really like, all right, whatever you do, I'm going to counter that. Whatever you say, I know how to play it. So that was how comfortable I was. So I wasn't really nervous about the work, but the music, I was like, oh shit, now, nah, never now. Nah. Let me, let me, let me, let me get hot on my own, bro. Let me get hot on my own. So that was, that was, and, and he knew, he he knew I was really serious about it because, you know, my, my, my takes were flawless. So that was what he, he appreciated. So how did he find out about your music? All right. So <laughs> crazy. So about four or five months into filming, still never mentioned anything to him about music. So I go, uh, I'm recording on the low. So what I was doing was I was going on set, kill it, and then go to record at night. So it was 24 hours of just working, 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 working. And then during the weekends, I was um, going to uh, different cities for hostings. So that was where I was, that's what I was eating off of. The money I was making from shows and, and, and bookings, that was the money that paid for everything else. So... Go in fifth. Uh, oh, sorry. So I go in, and these these producers, they're like, "Yo, this is when Snapchat had just came out." We're like, "Yo, we just want a, a beat thing on Snapchat." Um, so this producer, this guy, he's an A and R. He's gonna come and take some of our beats for some artists. So I said, "Cool, cool, cool." So old boy comes in, and my record is playing. There's a record called Lotto at the time. He's like, "Yo, that, that's you." I was like, "Yeah, man, that's me." He was like, "Yo, um, uh, uh, um." 
my name is Tony G. I work for G Unit Records. I said, bro, this is crazy. I said, yo, I'm I'm playing Dre on the, on 50's new show Power. He was like, bro, I do the music for that show. I said, what? He was like, yo, does Fifth know you sing? I said, bro, no. He was like, oh, he got to hear this. So he tells me to come to the office the next day, right? So my meeting was at one o'clock. I was supposed to be there at one. So when you have these meetings, you play records, it's really like a 45, 30, 45 minute meeting. So you just, it's never that long. But this day I was late. So I'm panicking. So I get there at 2.15. And it was an hour and 15 minutes late? I was an hour. Because of traffic, bro. It was, I, was in, I was in Brooklyn. Yeah, I was an hour and 15. So I'm like, damn, I lost it. I blew my, This is crazy. crazy. <laughs> hour and 15. So, but they're cool. Tony's like, I'm, it's cool. But don't worry, bro. I get it. So I get in. And then as soon as I sit down and play the first record, Fifth walks in. He comes into the office. So if I was on time, oh, he I would have missed. He was late himself. He, no, he wasn't even supposed to be there. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. He wasn't even supposed to be there. Sorry. Okay. He wasn't even supposed to be there. So it was just Tony G getting to know, play, hear more stuff, and then we're going to figure out what we were going to do. How to introduce it yeah, to him. Yeah, how to okay. introduce it to him. So that's what, that was crazy. But so he comes in and he's like, yo, bro, what you doing here? I'm like, oh, um, I'm playing some records, man. I'm playing some records, bro. He's like, what, you, you do music? He was like, I was like, yeah. He was like, yo, let me hear this. Okay. So he's thinking, I don't know, he was, he, he does that 50 laugh where, okay, this is going to be funny. That type of energy. <laughs> <laughs> funny. All right, cool. He sits down. And we play the record, and he just goes like, oh, and makes me play the record 10 times. And he's like, okay, listen, I'm going to put a verse on this, and I want to offer you a deal. And that's how I got my GM to deal, bro. Like, literally just God, Grace, Tony G, the Snapchat guys meeting at the same time, everything just aligned. So you signed to G unit. Yeah, I was yeah. signed to G unit. So again, and and I think the thing about it was Fifth was so uh, impressed that I didn't even ask him, you know. So I think he respected the grind of he still found out, you know, on his own, you know. Yeah. What was that like being being inside the genius? Because this is this is different. This is past the you know the Tony Yayo and yeah, that yeah. era, but it, now it's like R and B. Yeah. So what was that like? Because number one, you're working with him on the show. Yeah. And now you're working with him for the music. music yeah. How, how was that? No, it was it was. It was it was dope because at first it was like, all right, bro, you got to really, really work hard. But then you're a full-time actor too. So how are you going to do this? So I didn't sleep, bro. Like I didn't, it was studio, 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 work, 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 film, film, and no life. And I had to just comp compartmentalize my time. And I knew I had to do the hostings and, and, and as well because that was the only way I was going to eat because I made sure I didn't touch any of the... The power of money. Oh, you're not to, okay. Yeah, so for six years, for those six years, bro, I didn't I didn't touch any of that. Mm. I didn't touch, I just let that collect and build and and be there. That was like the, the nest egg, you know. I didn't want to touch that, you know. And so um, so yeah, I was like, this music gotta work. But working with Fifth, man, it was it was amazing because I was able to see him as a businessman, I was able to see him as an artist, I was able to see him as an actor, I was able to see and have close understanding of how he runs you know, what he does, you know? And so, and it was very motivating, but at that time I was still trying to find my sound too. So um, it was it was a really dope experience, really dope experience. So let's get into this. Yeah. You used to talk about it briefly, but all right. Your, your dad is an investment banker. Yes. Your first your first job mm -hmm. in, in acting, mm -hmm. he made you save all of the money. Yeah. A quarter million dollars you put up. Yeah. Then, you are in power for six years, six yeah. seasons, mm -hmm. six seasons, mm -hmm. and he made you save all of no, that. No, this was my choice. This was my choice. Oh, but you had got that from him. But I got that idea from him, yeah. All right, so the first time he made you do it, yeah. the second time you did it on my, your own. My own, yeah. All right, so you, so now you save all of your power money, Yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Six seasons worth of money. Six seasons worth of money. And you're only living off of um, club hostings. Yep, and shows. And shows that you're doing. Yeah. Now you got a nest egg of money that's yeah. saved. Yeah. What do you... What do you do with that money? So with that, I put a lot of it back into stocks. Um, and what I did right after that um, was buy my first house. So the first purchase with that money was real estate. So I paid cash for my first and that's house. That's your own primary residence that you're living in. Yeah. So you, you brought you no mortgage, you just purchased no it. No mortgage, cash. I just purchased it cash. And then I with the with then I built another house in Orlando. Um, as an investment property. 
So to Airbnb it for like or, Disney World, like Disney World. So I did. So what I did was, I tried to research where can I make the most money and what would keep the um, occupancy rate of my house busy all year. Where so Orlando was the first one, or one or two, and I realized that if I could if I could b- build another house three miles away from Disneyland, five bedroom, six bathroom, that's going to be very valuable, and then. So I bought that out as well, cash. So now, okay, cool. I know that I have liquid every month from that. There's no anything. So it's like the HOA fees and all those things, but it's another money that I can just have. And, and the first thing, it was just beautiful, man. Like within now seven months of having it, it already went up $250,000. Mm. You know what I mean? So again, it's just realizing, okay, making the money begets more money and make money. So then now I'm like, all right, cool. Let me get another one. You know, and so I built another one in Nigeria, uh, uh, Victoria. A house? Another house. To live in or to Airbnb? No, to, to, to Airbnb, Airbnb as well. But uh, that one is now for like film, uh, films use the, the house. Like content. Music, content, yeah, content, content created, yeah. music videos. Um, yeah, so that's that in Nigeria as well. So, you, so all right. We got the money in stocks. Money in stocks. Blue chip companies like yeah. Google. Yeah. Yes. Amazon, Apple, mm-hmm. stuff like that. Mm-hmm. How, what, what year was that? That you because you said like 2012. So in my head, I'm thinking about wait, this is like the inception of Facebook going yeah. public. Yeah. How, no, no, no. Sorry. So then Facebook came later with with Power Money. Gotcha. Sorry. Yes. So all of those blue chip companies you play. Yes. Then you buy your own residence that you're yeah. living in. Yes. Cash. Cash. You buy the Airbnb property in Orlando. Cash. Yes. Then you after that, you buy the house in Nigeria. Yeah. Cash. Yeah. So, all right. This is interesting because, uh, so a lot of athletes and entertainers, they go broke because they the decision making that they make, right? Yeah. So it's like, all right, instead of buying, it's, let's say somebody has a million dollars, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And s- what they'll do is, instead of buying a $500,000 house in cash, mm-hmm. they'll buy a $10 million house. Yeah. And have a twenty thousand dollar a month More mortgage. mortgage. Yeah. And the problem is that it's no problem to pay that if you're getting paid, paid twenty thousand an episode. Right. But when the episode stops, what do you do? Now you got twenty thousand dollars a month that yeah. you got to pay. Exactly. And let alone with the taxes. Taxes. Exactly. Yeah. So that in itself is an interesting decision to make. Was that your thought process to say, okay, I don't like this is an up and down game for me. Yeah. So. I'd rather just keep my bills low yes. and pay it in cash as opposed to ha- having a, a dope crib, but I got to pay this mortgage every month. So yeah, it was more so like, let me build. I, I was like, look, I'm not going to build my dream house yet. Let me just build something that's really dope for me. At the time I was a bachelor, so let me just build a dope crib for myself and and figure out the rest. But let me build another one so that you know um, I'm consistently going to see money for everything. So now this home is now paying all my bill, my phone, my this. So I'm living for free because at this point, acting and music is so all over the place. You don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. So I was like, let me just make sure everything was good. And then during this time, man, bro, like it was four months before COVID. Mm. So everything shut down except Orlando. People were still figuring out ways to, to travel and this and this and this because Florida was still open. Yeah. So I was still being able to make money while sitting down and Hollywood was done for a year, you know, so I, with no bills, with no nothing. And I'm still doing shows and everything as well. Like it was just, everything was just still collecting and collecting and collecting by the choices I made. So then <clears throat> the house in Nigeria was also, people were like, okay, cool, well, the prices are low for Airbnb, so this is a time where I can go stay in this place. So I was, I was renting it out for three, four months at a time to people, you know what I mean, that that I knew had some bread and needed somewhere to go. So I was still able to just collect, collect. And I know that, you know, God willing, 30 years from now, these these homes are retirement plans. You know yeah. what I mean? If I, if, if I hold it that long or flip it and, you know, get two more houses, whatever. But yeah, I was still just making money. So... This is this is pretty incredible. Thank so you got the, the power money you're stashing, but the yes. music money starts to pick up. Yes. Me and my beds out. Yes. Now you're watching this. So talk about watching the growth of that record grow Oof. and the type of money that that brought in. Because now everybody's streaming. It's exactly. It's perfect timing for you. So the record, so In My Bed actually got hot during COVID. Yep. So during COVID, everybody's making videos about In My Bed. Everybody's doing this about whatever. So How many people knew it that it was you? When I first heard it, I didn't know it was you. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of people didn't know. Yeah. A lot of people didn't know, but then they started shazamming, then the video came out, then people were like, yo, he's really, he really does this. You know what I mean? And and before in my bed, I had another record called Love, Love Rhythm. Rhythm. Yeah. Yep. So it was like, okay, he did it. He did it once. Oh, he, he did it again. So it became that. And I structured my deal with Empire where it's not an artist deal. It's more of a partnership. So a lot of the money that I make independently comes to me, you know? So during this time, so my streams are hitting, going crazy. It's going, and I'm still able to do shows. But if I was, if I was, to, if I was with a major at the time, I would have seen way less money, you know? So again, it was a situation where I kind of bet on myself because oh, we skipped over the fact that you know, 50 had let me out my deal. So I yes, no yes, yes. Two, 2017? Yeah, 2018. 18? Let me, yeah, so he had let me on my deal. How long was the deal supposed to be for? No, it was, um, I think, three albums. Three albums with Fifth. And you did one album? I did one. So you I just told one. him, like... Yeah, I, I told him, like, listen, man, I, I want to I wanna bet on myself, you know? And I feel like... Um, and, and during that time, there was a lot of... He was changing a lot with the, with the label. It was, he had fired everybody, so there wasn't anything really tangible for me to stay there. And he didn't, he didn't want me to stay there knowing that he was going through changes. Yeah. So, you never made it till you owe me Monday, so that's good. You said what? <laughs> you, you, never, you never part of that series where you owe me. Oh, no, no, so no. no he made, I don't know if you remember, but he was like, oh, I, I owe him money. You don't remember that? Oh, yeah. Oh, you, yeah. Made, you, yeah. Made, no, you did make it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so fact. I'll take yeah, yeah, back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's a fact. But so, okay, so that was actually a marketing, again, his marketing genius, man. So... um he let me out of my situation, but any if if you do any deal, obviously a label is going to put up money that they loan you to make whatever, and then you owe them back through your mechanicals. So we had a situation where he had put up about if in four years you put up maybe like two hundred fifty thousand, three hundred thousand investments in terms of videos and and shows and da 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 da. So he just made sure that I paid it off through my mechanicals with Empire. So it was, it's it's really nothing, you know, it's, it's what anything. But he was like, bruh, this is how I'm going to market you. I'm going to say I want to punch you in your face at least 25 times. And I'm going to say this nigga got the number one album in the, in the country. And but I'm going to say I'm going to punch you in your face and break your nose. And this. so I'm like, bro, what? Why? Why? He said, trust me, bro. It's going to work, bro. It's going to work. It's going to work. So he's like, yo, TMZ is going to call you the next day. Da, 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 da. And at the time, my album... Um, was number one on the R and B charts, but it was you know it, it starts off for three four days and it could fall off. Mm -hmm. But with him doing that, it made people be like, "Yo, he's we he got a um, number one album. Well, let me go check this." Out. And it stayed number one for about another two weeks. So it was brilliant. That's how that's what actually broke Love Rhythm. Yeah, you know what I mean. But so I was able to pay that back off through my mechanicals and you know get out of that situation. So. But it was it was dope. What's your man. mechanicals? What does that mean? So the money that you make from streams, the money that you make from um, airplay, the money that you make from publishing, everything that's from Tidal, Pandora, every time you get a stream. So basically, um, one hundred and fifty streams usually one hundred and fifty streams equates to like one dollar. So if you get five hundred, if you get about, it takes about. 75 million streams in total to go gold. So that's the thing. So you do the 75 million divided by 150, I think it's about 500,000. So that's how they break it up. So they break it up with definitely like getting... So that's why it's so important to get your, 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 your songs on Spotify, get your songs on Apple Music. All these things are super important because you need to be on these, these um, playlists to get, to get your streams up. So... That's what it was. So I was getting, whenever I make the money from that, I'd have to give a portion to him. So we had like a 25% split. So he'll get 25% of whatever came in until it's paid back. So that's what kind of So when you're having that conversation with 50, yeah. when, so he says, this is the plan. Yeah. It's going to help. But then when he's relaying his message on social media, he's not joking. Like people don't know it's a joke. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. They think it's serious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, hey, how was that for you? Like, oh, were, you, people, were people okay? Like, yo, you okay? Like, were they concerned? Yeah, yeah, people were concerned. Like, yo, bro, no, even Snoop called, he was like, bro, I'll pay your debt for you, bro. I don't want you, <laughs> I don't want you to have these problems. Like, no, I said, bro, it's, it's good. We just playing. He's like, oh, shit. Okay, cool, bro. Let's make sure you good, man. He's like, I know how 50 get, bro. I know, I know you got to see him every day, too. Oh, shit. And we still filming the show. 
Drake about to get killed yeah, quicker than we thought. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it was, it was, it was crazy, man. Because again, it's him just doing his thing. But yeah, I had to deal with that. I was like, yo, you you good? Like Jamie called me, like, yo, you good, bro? Like I can give you fifty thousand. Drake from Power. Oh, crazy. fifty. So like the mind of Fifty Cent, right? Yeah. Let's talk about this for a minute, because yeah. I'm sure you you've seen it, you've been around it. Yeah. How strategic? Because we see him do these things a lot. Yeah. How strategic is he as a person? Because like I said, on the outside, it just looks like, oh, 50 just being 50 again. He going off on this person, going off on that person. Mm. Everything, every, I, I knew, I realized the man was a marketing genius, bro, when he sat us all down, he sat the cast down, and this is when we were filming season two. And he was like, yo, Empire, they on Fox. They got the big bag. We can't compete with them with their, with their marketing or their promotion, their advertisement. We're on stars. We cannot compete. But I'm going to start a beef with them that they have to mention us every time they get interviewed. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go straight for Taraji. I'm going to go straight for Terrence. I'm going to go straight for everybody and make whoever is the interviewer ask about, did you hear what 50 said about power being better and everything? So I saw how he attached himself to a hundred million dollar promotion and it but it put us like this, the pit, like, oh, what's better, power or empire? And I saw him create that. Yeah. And like, so it was like a Monday, he said, I'm gonna go sit down with, I forgot who he was, and it was went by Wednesday, it was power. And this to a point where Taraji's going crazy about fifth, Terrence is going crazy. And it was just like, wow, like you guys don't understand that this man really just is playing with you strategically. And now we are now in competition with y'all. And every time you do something, you have to mention it. And your name is automatically attached. Automatically, because yeah. I mean, your 50 Cent show power, he was saying that, da, 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 da. 50 Cent said this about your show, not better being than better. So everybody's like, what show is this? Because at the time, power wasn't, people found out about power for real, like maybe season, like they didn't watch it when it was on. I don't, did you watch it when it I was first watched, on? Yeah, yeah. I watched it when it first started, it was, but season two, I feel yeah. like that's when it that's really That's when it started. really hit. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. So, well, that's when you went to Miami? Yeah. Season two? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was, that's, that's, that's season two. Season three was Miami, I think. No, season two, two was Miami. Two, Miami. That was, my, that was my, one of my first my yeah. first episodes. Wait, wait, with Angela. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that's when it took off. So it became that because of now we tied to a $100 million marketing plan. Guerrilla marketing. Guerrilla marketing, bro. You have it. Real guerrilla. Yeah. There you have it. Now, we got to talk about something very important. Talk you said you once were a bachelor. Yes, yes, brother. Let's talk about one of the most important decisions you've made. Yes, brother. Mary and Vanessa. Yes. Talk about how you met, the story behind it. So, met V. So, V, Vanessa, man, incredible woman. My God, man. Like, she saved my life, bro, because I was out here thotting, brother. <laughs> <laughs> she saved my life, my guy. Recovering thot. Yeah, I was, a, I was a recovering fan. It was bad for me. It was, it was actually really good for me, actually. But uh, but nah, um, so she's an artist herself, you know, and she's one of the biggest artists in, in from Tanzania. So she was basically the East African Rihanna. So she had a show. She had a show. Uh, we met at Essence. So she had a show at Essence, and I also had a show uh, performing at the, the main stage at Essence. So this particular weekend, though, I had a joint that flew in. You know, like a little, you know, weekend. One of them things. Yeah, one of them things. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> she flew in. So this is the craziest story, bro. So at the time, Shorty was with me the entire day. But then at night, she was like, I'm not feeling too well. And I had to go stop by this private um, Spotify party. And I was like, I'm going to be there for 15 minutes. You don't have to come. I'll be there. I'll be back. And then just meet us at the next spot. So in that 15 minutes, we go. And then I see uh, V sitting on a pool table. I'm like, oh my God, this is crazy. So start you know, talking. You know who she was? I didn't know who she was at the oh. time, but they introduced me and I was like, and they, they told me who, who she was. But I didn't really care about that. I was like, yo, you, you're vibing. So we just started talking. So 15 minutes turned into about two and a half hours. So I forgot. Like, I'm tripping. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I forgot, bro. Hey. So I'm getting texts like, where are you? I'm like, oh, oh, oh. So then V was like, <laughs> stay focused. Yeah, stay focused. <laughs> stay focused. So V is like, V is literally like, you know, I want to see you tomorrow um, before I leave. And I'm like, listen, let me just be honest with you. I got a situation. I don't want to put you, I don't want to make, let me, let me deal with this. 
and then I can focus on you. And I usually I wasn't like that. I was like, yeah, you here, you here, you here, what's up? But I was like, there's a multitask. Respect. Yeah, it was multitasking. <laughs> you know what I'm I fire to the city yeah. I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> it's multitasking, but I was there was a respect there, you know, and it was a it was a it was a different type of love, man. And so she goes, she leaves, still talking, still talking. And that time difference is different, man. So she leaves. And at the time, now I'm building my house. I'm building the house in Atlanta. So asking her like, yo, what do you think of this? I want to do this. I want to do this. And by the time the house is done, me and her about three, four months into just long distance talking. So I didn't know that the house that I'm building is basically being, being built for us. You mm. know what I'm saying? So by the time it's done, it's like, yo, she's like, I want to come to the States. You know, she comes to the States and she, at the time she hates America. She was like, it's, there's too much going on here. And it gets to the point where bro, like, I was like, yo, do you want to go back? You can just, we can figure it out. You can stay with me. And when she came, she never left. So y'all was, you hadn't seen, Essence, you didn't see her again. But I didn't see her for three months. But y'all talking. Talking every day. It's like nine. And then when she comes back to America, yeah. is it, is it, when she comes back to America, is it like we just friends or y'all like really No, rock, no, like we rocking. Like we, it's basically a relationship. So you, be, you get a relationship virtually. Virtually. Like a lot yeah. of WhatsApp. A lot of WhatsApp. Yeah, WhatsApp. So by the time she comes to America, y'all already locked yeah, up. Yeah, we live. We, yeah. But it was like, she was like, let me just come for two weeks. You know, let me just see you for two weeks. I'm going to take off from everything. But then the two weeks turned into now four years, bro. She never went back. She she hasn't gone back? She has not gone. No, she hasn't gone back. To Tanzania? No, she hasn't. In four years? In four years now. Does she miss it? Yeah, she missed her family. But I think she was just like, there's nothing there really for me. And And, and the cool thing about it was... She wanted to, when we first met, she was already telling me she wants to retire. She just wants to be focused on business and focused on her, her life, focused on just learning herself because she's been doing it for 15 years. So it was like her ending that and then me saying, yo, just, you might as well just stay. And it became the perfect situation. And now you got the whole family. And now we got, yeah, you got two so, kids. But she's still very big in, in yeah. East Africa. Yeah, yeah. So, all right, let's talk about the Africa play. Yeah. yeah. So you are... Born in America, but yes. obviously your your roots are Nigerian. Yes, yes. And you go back there a lot. Yes. Um, and she's obviously huge on the east. So you got the east and west side. Yeah. So do you got what do you guys have plans? Yeah. For Africa, yes. as far as like expansion, business, music, like how do you look at that? So again, so for music for her. When she retired, she owns all her stuff, all her, all, her, all her streaming and everything. She owns everything. So like when she retired, her songs became iconic. So she's not making music anymore. So she's not making music anymore, but her songs have become iconic and staples. So then she's still streaming very well mm. because of it. And what we did was in terms of business, we started an app, a wellness app together called ForTheBetter.me. And what it is, is it, it started off in COVID where... It was just like, yo, let's just give gratitude to uh, make gratitude posts for people, vi a vi a videos. So like every day they'll get a, a, a video post from me or her, but we wanted people to subscribe. So then we we're like, well, that's too basic. Let's make it where they get an inside look at our life. Let's get to where like, okay, what we love, what we do, what we did. So we we're like, okay, let's charge $5 per, per month, 45 for a year. Twelve dollars for three months subscription. So we're like, let's figure this out. Let's 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 make money. Let's let's give something to our fans. And they were like, yo, why is Instagram and all these these platforms getting free money, like freedom, like they 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 were posting to them and not earning anything? Mm -hmm. You know, why don't why don't we control our content? And so it was like, all right, let's figure out a different way to make bread. And we know people are nosy as hell, so let's let's capitalize on that, but also give you know. Bible scriptures that we love or what, what I like to eat on my workout regimen to our core fans. And we started seeing during the uh, pandemic for the last two years, we started seeing a lot of subscriptions to our show. So we're constantly making content that's just for our fans. And, and that's what's keeping her really alive as well in Tanzania because they're getting they're seeing her and what she really does as a mom now. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So it's been really good. You you said key word retired. And yeah. we kind of had this conversation before, yeah. but that that conversation when you're you're looking at your spouse or you're yeah. looking at your wife at, at the time and yeah. seeing like, I may want you to focus on something else. Yeah. Like as your your career is thriving. Yeah. What was that like, right? Because she's obviously established as a musician. I yeah. told you it was there a number that you said that we need to reach as a couple mm. or 
Like, how, how did the dynamics work for her to stop? Well, for me, it was like, okay, let me figure this out because everything is paid off. So there's no stress. You know what I mean? So that's a big thing. For me, it was like, okay, there's no stress. You being here is not going to make it $10,000, $15,000 more a month. You know, it's, it's mm -hmm. more so, okay, we'll figure this out, but let's start doing outside businesses that now you're in control of. So we created the app and now she completely runs that. Mm -hmm. So she gets her salary, her monthly, you know what I mean? And it's all hers, you know what I mean? So again, and she also has her streaming, which has picked up more than when she was actually an artist, you know, and it keeps growing every year, every year, every year. And then we also, she was like, I want to, I want to, um, I want to write, write, make a Swahili book. So we also made a Swahili book where it's like 25 easy words that anybody in the world, because Swahili is the, the number one spoken African language. So we made a book where it's on Amazon and people are able to just learn different words, um, easy words or easy phrases. So that was also another thing that we did. So we were like, let's just figure out different businesses that keep you busy, that keep your mind coming up creative, keep you still feeling like you're a part of, you know, the culture as well. And yeah, so we just created more businesses for each other. That's incredible. How many subscribers we got on that? So we are up to now about eight, 9,000, 9,000 subscriptions. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 So, and it, so it's a subscription and it's just like a, it, a look in your life. Yeah. Much. Looking in life. Yeah. So it's like a look in our life. Um, it shows again, what I like to eat, what she likes to eat, things we're reading, um, how she, how we both are as parents, um, how we deal with the relationship, giving relationship advice. So it's all these things um, for the better than me that it, it just really just gives a, like we'll post, that's why we stop really posting each other on our Instagram because it's like, if you really want to see us. Travel traffic to your side. Travel here. So yeah. again, we've done it where 9,000 subscribers, that's, that's $5 a month, you know, so she's in a space where, okay, you know, uh, she's really happy, you know. So again, that is, and then keep building that and keep building that. And she has 8 million followers on Instagram. She has 8 million followers, yeah. Because we were like, yo, there got to be at least 10,000 people that want to pay for our life. There got to be at least 30,000, like out of the 8 million and out of my three, 11 million. There's, there got to be thousands of people. So we're able to make even 3,000 subscribers a month. You know, that's you know, still a, a nice piece of change just mm -hmm. to... So we were just thinking from that and we were like, we don't need that much, but we can still build it every day. So, you know, yeah, that's where we're at. So where's the skincare line coming to play? So during COVID, um, I was using a lot of different products that were breaking my skin out, man. And I was just like, yo, like, let me create my own thing that both men and women can use that's all organic, that is true to me and, and, and feels regal. And um, again, man, God's gift, man. I, I partnered with these, these guys in, in Israel and we got minerals from the Dead Sea. So the Dead Sea, people, if you don't know, it's, it's a healing component. So a lot of people go down to uh, Greece. I mean, it, sorry. A lot of people go down to Israel to go straight to the Dead Sea to heal any type of skin disease, skin orders, uh, skin uh, disorders, skin cancer, uh, eczema, all these things. So I was like, oh, this is perfect. And it's 100% natural. So we partnered the deal. I was like, they were like, what do you want to call it? I, I was like, no, I want, I want people to have favor. Favor, you know, favor of their life, favor of this. And I know how important skin and feeling sexy and feeling good and 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 having good skin means to people. So wanted to make it unisex. So did the deal with them and it's been about a good year so far and it's doing really, really well. So we have skin cleanser, um, toner, uh, moisturizer, um, lotion, under eye. So it's everything that you need to take care of your skin and, and favorskin.com. You can go check it out, but it's really, really, really good and really healthy for you. So that the only place they can get it is from the, the website or yeah. are we trying to distribute to, you know, the big box stores here in America and internationally as well? So that's the plan. So we're actually talking to Target right now, <clears throat> but also we're getting it on, on Amazon. As of right now, it's, from, it's on the website. So mm -hmm. favorskin.com, F-A-V-R, skin.com. So it's on the website now, but we're getting it through Amazon so it can now go global because again, me and V, our fan base reaches Africa, Europe. Mm -hmm. So once that happens, it's going to be crazy. And then we're working out a situation with HSN now. Ooh. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, so we're, we're in talks. So we, we, we're about to finalize that. So once that happens, you know, and then the, the target conversation has happened as well. So, and everyone loves the product, like genuinely loves, loves the product. And it's been really, 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 really dope for, for both men, women, kids as well. And it's all organic, yeah. all organic. I feel like you have a natural audience, right? You have 9,000 people that are watching it, part exactly. of your daily routine. Exactly. This is part of your daily routine. Exactly. Right. So from a marketing standpoint, did was were you conscious of that and made that Absolutely. part of the business plan? Absolutely. So on the app, we show the whole skincare regimen. We show how to how to use it, what to do, even give like a breakdown of what each mineral and what each thing does for it. So out of the nine thousand, we may say about let's say four thousand have purchased it, you mm -hmm. know, automatically. So and then <clears throat> realizing that once somebody actually tries it, they 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 want it all the time now, you know, and that's, that's been the consensus from a lot of our fans and just people who are just discovering it. But we know that once it goes, the HSN, once it gets to Amazon, we know it's going to be on a different level and, and it's doing pretty well. So, all right, let me ask you this. Yeah, man. Um, well, how many, before we get there, yeah. how many products are in the line? It's about five products. Five products. Mm -hmm. So it's like a moisturizer. Moisturizer, toner, um, lotion, uh, face mask. And um and the the actual the actual wash. So we see Rihanna, shout out to her, yeah. become a billionaire off of, off yeah. of Fenty. Yes. Cosmetics, Kylie Jenner. Yes. Billionaire off of cosmetics. Yes. Um, is this the kind of uh, goal that you have? Yeah, yeah. I mean, yes, absolutely. Even because, though it's not cosmetics per se, but it's yes. still skincare. skincare. Because it's my life, you know. And the funny thing is, man, I do a a a, a um. What really got me the idea was I did a um, a character named Butterscotch, you know, where I put like this white. Yeah, I remember. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so a lot of companies were like, yo, we would love for you to be a part of this. Can you rock out this and this and this? And I'm like, why would I give my brand to you when I can create my own, my own, you know, face mask and my own face product? you know, skincare line. So let me just not give you this. Let me make my own stuff. So that's what started it. But yes, from seeing the success of it, man, like again, and you just start seeing like these checks come in every three months, you're like, oh, it's very motivating. You know, it's very motivating to see that, damn, something that I created is now, you know, helping fund my life, you yeah. know? And so it's pretty dope. How do you protect the product? Like you said that you went to Israel, Israel yeah. and got minerals from the Dead Sea. Like how do we protect another brand from following the same pattern? Or is there a way to protect it? Um, that's a great question. Um, well, anybody can, you know, I, I can't, I don't own the Dead Sea. You right, know right, right, right. However, but like, again, it comes into the marketing, you know, again, it comes into um, even just the, even learning how the bottle, like the colors of the bottle, it depends on it, 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 and then the product and then people just literally seeing results so fast. I don't think, again, it, it being so pure, and for people to trust you with their face, you know what I mean? And then for them to see that it works, the word of mouth of everything. So I think just the, the difference would be the marketing and, and, and just making sure people understand that um, it's unisex. That, that, there's not a lot of unisex products too. You know, yeah. people are scared to do that, you know, but again, seeing the results of that, is, it's been beautiful. So the Jay-Z, you meet him when you're a teenager. Yeah. But then I guess you meet him again with the Rock Nation brunch, right? Yeah, yeah. So how, when, when was that and how was that? So this was 2018, um, 2018. And at the time, uh, my song Love Rhythm was going crazy. And so I haven't seen Hove at that time for maybe, wow, 10 years, maybe 10 years, if that. So I'm not sure how, if he remembers. I don't know. Again, you don't know if he watches Power. You don't know nothing. So he sees me. He's like, bro, what's up? And it's like, oh, wow, this is What's up, man? What's up, bro? You know what I mean? It was a moment, but then realizing he was like, man, I'm so proud of what you're doing, man. I'm so happy for you. I, I love what you're doing, man. You're super, super talented. I love the songs. And then his nephews, he was like, how y'all niggas let this nigga go, man? How you let this nigga go, oh, they man? Was, they was there? They was there, yeah, yeah. yeah. He was like, how you let him know? What? Damn, you know, but it was, it was a dope moment of, again, validation, knowing that, you know, again, like you made an impact on one of the greatest life and he's still watching you. What are they up to now? Um, I'm not too sure. I think they work for Rock Nation. Oh, so y'all not really? Yeah. No, 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 no. Like nothing's, long, nothing's wrong, but like, I, th I think they still work with Rock Nation. Yeah. Yeah. 
I, so I, I was telling you, um, we were flying, and um, House Party is my favorite movie of all time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I said, let me watch the new rendition of it. Yeah. And I pop up and I see you on screen. I'm like, oh, <laughs> perfect. We're about to sit down with him next week. Yeah. Can you talk about that that transition from being on a TV series to yeah. now being on the big screen? Because a lot of actors, yeah, I feel I find it a t- it's tough, Absolutely, right? Because bro. the the TV series takes a lot of your schedule. Yes. Whereas yeah. movies can be two to three months. Yes. And there's a timing that you have to do it, right? You don't want to yes. miss your moments. Talk yes. about that transition from TV to, to, to film. So, uh, okay. So it took eight months out of the year to film Power. So we were filming eight months, bro. So again, with movies, the most it'll be usually is about 45 days. So that for me freed up a lot of my time to do other things, but still have a dope impact on whatever the movie is going to be. Um, Again, I needed for me personally the transition, bro. I needed a, I needed a break from TV because I needed to consistently build the music up because it takes too much time. Mm-hmm. And doing a series that long, you know, you kind of need like a moment, you know. And and again, for me, strategically, Dre was such a powerful character that for me to jump into something right away, I didn't want. It felt like it would be it would hinder the new show because people would just still see that character. Mm-hmm. And so for my mental health, um, for the trajectory of my career, it was like, let's take a break from TV. Let's focus on movies. Let's focus on these month and a half. Let's build the music up. Let's don't stress. And then at that time, it was COVID. So everything kind of shut down, mm-hmm. you know? So now that the world's starting to act back, um, open back up, now it's like, okay, if a TV show comes that makes sense, I'm open to it. So now I'm on a TV show called Will Trent mm-hmm. um, on ABC. ABC yep. So with that being said, Different dynamic. They don't have a lot of us on there. You know what I mean? It's on ABC. So for me, it's like, okay, you made the right choice, bro. You know, like, so you're able to do this for two, three years, get your family right, spend time with your kids, build your relationship, get to know your woman more before you have to go away now for another eight months to do something. So everything just worked out perfectly. Yeah, I think selfishly as fans, it's like, we want to see Amari on the show for... 10 seasons. Yeah. You want to see Issa on, do 10 seasons of Insecure, yeah. but we know there's a window, it's a window that, that you man. can't miss. Because, and, and and six seasons of Dre was a sweet spot where it was like, okay, I could, I, I still have room to make Rotimi. Mm-hmm. You know, I still have room to build my brand. I still have room to do it. But it's also iconic enough that you'll never forget it. So that's that's that was a sweet spot. So now, two, three year break, get on something that's completely opposite from that um, and show, you know, my range as an actor. Yeah. So man. you got a crazy Jamie Foxx story too, huh? Yeah, bro. Talk about that. So, man, again, bless Mo. Like, God has been good to me. So the first, first celebrity that I ever met in LA was Jamie Foxx. And again, knowing that I wanted to be a triple threat, knowing that I wanted to be an actor, singer, musician, that's somebody I looked up to. But that specific day, he was filming Django. So if you if you remember he was he had the the the, the beard the dirty beard mm-hmm. so it's night it's night it's a party so I feel somebody tap me on my shoulder and he was like yo man what's up I'm like oh, what's up bro what's up man yo 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 bro I'm a fan of you man I'm like oh thank you bro thank you man for sure for sure bro <laughs> <laughs> yo bro what's up man what's up bro I look and I'm like oh wow <laughs> my bad dog my bad so. <laughs> So he was like, man, you're super talented, man. Me and Leonardo DiCaprio stop our show. I stop, stop filming and watch, watch you do um watch your show, watch boss on set. We have everybody, we have Quentin Tarantino, everybody watch you, man. I'm like, yo, this kid is super special. And he was like, How long you been acting? I'm like, man, I've been acting, you know, six months now. He was like, What? He was like, you ain't take class? I was like, nah. He was like, oh, you like me. Okay, bet. Look, bro, let's come to my crib tomorrow. Let's talk. Let's da 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 So I go to his crib the next day. And he's like, so you've been acting. So what have you been da 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 So I, yeah, I was like, I do music too. I like, he was like, you do? So go to his studio, play him records. And he's now I'm blown away, bro. He's now I'm blown away. And now he's like, yo, you are my little brother. Like, I got you forever. Like, whatever you need, I'm here for you. You're like me. And he was like, I'm going to help you figure out you know, money, how to handle how these girls, da, 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 da. So Jamie became my big brother very, very fast. So even to the point where when he wasn't even at the crib, I would have the key to the house and just chill and just stay, you know, do my meetings and, and, and stay at Jamie's crib, man. And it, it was that type of love. And just knowing as someone of that caliber who's doing what you're doing, 
just shows you love and just says, I got you. And he's never, he's never switched up and it's been like that for 10 years now. But yeah, man, he would come to pop up to my events and get on stage and be like, yo, this kid's going to be the one. He's the one. Watch, you know. And so having that support, you know, is, is a confidence booster. But yeah, I didn't recognize him, bro. It was, it was the funniest <laughs> thing. And it, it was to the point I was getting irritated. Like, yo, stop touching me. <laughs> stop touching me, bro. But it was, it was, it was dope, man. That's crazy. Yeah. So is there a dream role? that you see yourself wanting to play one day? Like you brought up Jamie and I felt like yeah. when we watched him in Ray, yeah. he was born for that moment. Yes, yes. Like, I mean, even Common said it, like they couldn't tell it was me like Jamie and Ray because you felt like yeah. you were watching Ray Charles. Yes. Is there a role out there that you've always dreamed of to say, yo, one day, if, if the situation is right, I want to be yeah. this? I mean, I want to, I definitely want to be, I don't know, if, I don't know, I don't know for sure if it's a Marvel character, but I want to be a superhero, bro, and have my own franchise of it. Whether it's a superhero or whether it's something of like, like a dope war veteran that you know goes through something crazy. But that those two ideas, I, I'm definitely flushing out. But also like having like a franchise romantic comedy, you know, like a Meet the Falkers type of situation where it's funny as hell, but like it goes three, four, five movies yeah. and and the dynamic of a Nigerian and and another another race families meeting and just be chaotic you know what i mean so something something cool like that but again whatever it's going to be i definitely want the ownership of it you know definitely want the ownership of it so you're independent music right yeah so why'd you want to stay independent or go independent or did you have other majors on the table yeah so i think at this point in time like i knew that my value as as an artist and as a name, as being somebody f like who's famous, I knew because of my relationships, I could cut a lot of the budget that a major would pay. You know what I mean? So knowing that I didn't have, knowing I'm not a new artist, I didn't, I don't need the same, I don't need a heavy marketing budget. I don't need this and this and this. I can use who I am and what I have. So if I keep my my overhead low and I know I have all these 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 relationships and I know I also have great music and I, I know I can call the radio station and say, yo, da, 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 da. I was like, why would I, why would I make, why would I ask for so much and pay back so much when I don't necessarily have to? Mm -hmm. So I was like, nah, don't give me that much. Let me, let's, let's work this. And then everything out of that, get me out of the, get me out of the red and I'm in the black faster, yeah. you know? And so that's what I realized. But then again, you build the leverage to then sit with a major and say, let's partner instead of not letting, letting me be just an artist underneath, you know, underneath them. Now it's like a 50-50 split, 80-20 split, whatever we work out. But I had to build that and show that, okay, you know, and plus I keep majority of the money more than most, most artists who are on majors, you know, in terms of deals. So it made more sense. Yeah, when you're doing those type of shows and deals, the power or the leverage that you yes. built from acting yes. helps in the music, right? Absolutely. Especially in negotiations. In negotiations. So you know my value. So it's not like, I mean, if the music was bad, then okay. But like, if, if since the music is good, you see that there's already eyes on me. So, okay, you don't have to do heavy lifting, okay? It means I don't have to get a 500,000 budget that, that I need to do all this when you can give us 100 and we can do the same thing and then we out of that 100 faster, mm -hmm. you know? So that's kind of the mindset that I was at. So, so what's your plans for the future? Like, what's what's your top priorities? Is it music? Is it acting? Is music. it entrepreneurship? Like, uh, ooh. my top priority is entrepreneurship because it comes with everything, right? So that now being a father, bro, like it changes. It makes you so selfless. So now, yeah, the music is dope. The acting is dope. But now I'm thinking of okay everything. How can I make sure my son is good? My daughter's good. How can I, um, how can I protect their future? Okay. I put up money here that they can't touch. Maybe when they're 18, they can touch this or so I'm doing everything for them now. And I know being an entrepreneur allows all of this to take care of them. So selfishly before that, <clears throat> I would have definitely been like, Oh, music for life. But now it's more so like, entrepreneur to take care of my family, you know? So how do we make sure these, these books sell? How do we get more subscribers? How do we get more favor? You know, how do we get this? How do we make more dope records? How do we get on TV and save this bread again and do that run over, you know? So that type of thought and, and is beyond me. It's beyond me. That's a lot, man. That's a lot. Yeah, yeah. The, 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 the next part of it is you spoke about 
investing. Yeah. So are you, are you still actively using your brokerage account or is it just long term? Long term. Mm. Long term. Bro. Buy and hold. Yeah. yeah, buy and hold. Buy and hold. Smart, man. man. Yeah, <laughs> buy and hold, bro. There's no need, you know? That's it, yeah. man. Well, well, last thing. Very last yeah, thing. Yeah, and it's because it goes back to being married. Yeah, bro. You have financial discipline. Yeah. Did you walk into the relationship with your wife having financial discipline? No, she was horrible. <laughs> she was horrible. That's usually the case, man. Bro, she was so bad, bro. Like, it was so bad because it was so bad that at one point of it, she she's not realizing. So when we're building the app, so she's not realizing. She's like, I want this part of it. I want this, this, this. And we're talking to the, the builders. Like it costs money. To do yeah, it. so she's not realizing. I'm like... I'm like, every every time you call them and talk to them about this, it's the, so you're going to put us in the hole before oh, we start, even make it. And she did. You know what I'm saying? So it was like, Congrats, honey. yeah, it was, and it's like, I can't get mad. It's like, all right, we just got to figure it. And she felt so horrible. So I'm happy that happened early because now she's like, I'm going to just listen and just follow what you do. And now she's incredible with it now, man. It's really dope. That's dope. Are y'all still, I know you said I'm saving power checks. Yeah. I'm saving these checks. What is the the basis that we live of now? Is it is it the app? Like how the it's it show still. Show it, still. Still. Wow. Still, still. Nothing else. Show money, hostings, um, endorsements, and 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 also just, you know, singing, wedding singing again. You know what I mean? I have a new record called I Do, mm -hmm. and it's like a really powerful wedding song. So now people hire me to come sing at their wedding for that song, man. And so again, it's are just you still doing wedding? You still doing wedding? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah. price is a lot higher. Oh, yeah, the price is a lot higher. <laughs> Nigerian and I'm not, and my parents ain't stealing my money. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? When he said the Nigerian wedding singer, I'm in my head, I'm thinking coming to America, slight part, because I know you're in part two, but my guy. in my head, I'm saying, She's your queen too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, man. I was like, listen, man, again, let me just save all the acting money. I still don't touch my acting money. Wow. I still haven't, bro. I still make sure I don't. It's Cause again, for me, it's just there's no need to, you know, and and um again, living off the road, that road money and 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 saving everything else, everything else. So nothing is touched. So are y'all the most popular couple in Africa? Yeah. So do you have plans for Africa as far as like, I don't know. Um, In terms of what, like um, musical? Bigger than music. Okay. Just like ambassadors. Like, I feel like you, yeah. like, you know what I mean? Like, as far as like rebranding the continent, yeah. uh, I don't know, building a hotel or something, amusement yeah, yeah. park. Like, you see Akon doing what he's City. doing, right? Yeah, and yeah. you see, so I feel like Africa right now is going to be the continent of the next century. Absolutely. And there's a lot of investment in Africa mm -hmm. from a variety of different places, China and different things of the nature. Mm -hmm. So it's always good when people that's actually from yeah, the, yeah. can actually benefit from it and and rebrand it, right? Yeah. Prop, I, I call it positive propaganda. Absolutely. As opposed to negative propaganda, right? Yeah. So you guys being, you know, how how big you guys are, yeah. I'd see it as an opportunity. Yeah. And it's both sides of the continent, east side, west side. So yeah. it's like really the whole continent. Yeah, yeah. So ha have you ever even thought about that? Like you guys role as Africa ambassadors? Yes, yes, yes. So we've talked about building a school out there um, and, and making it a, a school for uh, film. Everything that's basically kind of like how Oprah did it, where it's not necessarily the curriculum. It's mm -hmm. more so about kids being really gifted at something. So if you're a really gifted singer, if you're a really gifted actor, if you're really, if you're dope at sports, if you're dope at, if you want engineering, it becomes not like STEM, but more like really just tailor-made school for just the gifted, you know, and whatever they wanted to focus on. And so if you go and say, I, I, I like engineering, but oh, I fell in love with music here, the curriculum will shift for you, you know? So having that type of idea. So in if like the next, Three to five years, we'll definitely hone in on that. But um, and I and I don't know if it'll be in Nigeria or Tanzania, but um, obviously one of them. But um, but yeah, definitely building a school out there, bro, for the for the gifted. So how's your kids? Like, is it important for for you to teach them the African because they're growing up in Atlanta, they're yeah. Americans. Yeah. Um, is that something you think about, or you just let absolutely. it happen organically? Absolutely, absolutely. Again, like you know, she's a, she's. Only been in America for four years. That's an African woman, you know. You know, she does not play, bro. You know what I'm saying? My girl don't play, you know what I'm saying? So she her morals as a mom are so beautiful. And then also I was raised by African parents, like in an African, like in a Nigerian household where it was I was just living in America. But my parents raised me as a Nigerian boy. So um those principles are, are naturally instilled in us, you know, and and um and we're gonna make sure, you know, that they have that because it's really important, it can, it's, it's, 
And especially in today's generation, kids get lost very easily, man. Mm -hmm. So if you don't have a hold on them, you know, I make sure that my son, you know, reads and is creative and has less screen time than 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 the average kid because now he's trying to figure things out and he's super intelligent. So, yeah, so I think it's more so just keeping the the, the principles I grew up with. So last question, yeah. Afro Beats. Yeah. How has it been for you? And is that something that you're... You want to embrace because your your music is not Afro beats. It, it is it's half and half. It's, half yeah, and half. yeah, yeah, yeah. So seeing the rise of Afro beats from yeah. David O to yeah. Burner Boy to yeah. Tim's, yeah, it's taking over the world. Yeah. Um, how does that feel for you? Like yeah. you know, being Nigerian and mm -hmm. yeah, are you leaning more into Afro beats these days? Be, mm. These days because it's, it is so popular. So for me, bro, like. I just make music that feels right. And and the thing about it is the the two records that are about to go platinum were Afrobeat records of mine. So it wasn't me trying to do anything. It was me just being myself and making music that makes me feel good. So me and Punch were talking about it earlier. It was just like, bro, like, why don't you do this? Why don't you get on this? Why don't you try this? Why don't you do this? So I'm very versatile as a musician. So I don't really put myself in a box, but it's... If it feels good, it feels good at this point in time, you know, and there's no real roadmap anymore for it. But like we have a record, you know, that's coming out with with Coil Array that's going to be crazy. You know, it's not really an Afro beat record. It's more kind of dancehall reggae, you know. So yeah. it's not, it's, it's kind of like all over, but I have a wedding song that's traditional R&B, you know. So it's basically just being able to play, you know, the different levels of my, of my talent. Be a musician. Be a musician. Be free, bro. There you have it. Yes, so, how can they tap in, uh, get the skincare line and all yeah. of that? Tell them all of the stuff you got working on, everything. So, this, yes, yes. So, favor skin, F A V R skin.com is available for you guys everywhere. Um, if you want to subscribe to our, our wellness app, uh, for the better .me. Um, If you want to pick up our book, Swahili 101. Um, and yeah, man, just keep supporting. The record's coming out very, very soon. Keep supporting, man. And this is really dope, man. I appreciate y'all. Thank you for appreciate coming, you man. Know, man. You got to pull up on us in Atlanta. Heck too. yeah, I'm we there. Got we got to be on the continent too, man. So we might oh, yeah, we got together. something big. Heck um, yeah. yeah. You been to Ghana before? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just left. We got, we got a show in Ghana at the end of the year. So nice. that's, that's going to be dope. Looking forward to it. I'm there with you. Coming? Perfect. Yeah, I'm there. Yeah, you yeah. heard him. Yeah. You heard him. Yeah. You, heard him. <laughs> you heard it first. Yeah. Troy, housekeeping items? Well, first, I'd like to just let everybody know if you're looking to book me as an actor, a method actor, please <laughs> reach out to a so at earnyleisure.com. I, I, I can't say that. I would, well, <laughs> reach out to him. Uh, nah, but on a serious note, shout out to everybody on EYL University, all our earners, all the RPX people. Uh, it's been a beautiful, beautiful community. Uh, we were up in uh, T dot, uh, and we, we started a new chapter up there. So shout out to y'all. Shout out to the merch team. Uh, everybody that's been supporting from day one, man, love is love. Continue to, to, to build with us. Thank you guys for rocking us. We'll see you next week. Peace.